Good morning, welcome to Grace United Methodist Church. We are souls on fire this morning. It feels like an Olympic sermon series in here this morning. Good morning and welcome. Uh, we're so glad that you have joined us. We continue on with our Olympic sermon series. Uh, we've learned about the practice of Lexio Divina. We've learned about spiritual friendship and how to be soul friends, to encourage one another along this way. And today we're going to learn another practice from St. Ignatius, an ancient church father. So we're glad that you've joined us for this series. Uh, if you are new, we welcome you, and we're just glad to be church family together this morning. Um, let us introduce ourselves. I would like to introduce myself. I'm Janet Sauber. I'm one of the pastors here. And by the way, welcome back, Pastor Drew. Thank you very much. I'm Drew Colby, and I'm back from some uh, vacation, and I'm thrilled to be back. I've missed you all uh, a lot, so I'm glad to be back in worship. And we you missed today. you. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I want to make sure that you all know that we would love to learn your name and pray with you, and we have a way to do that together. It's called the Connect Card, uh, and you can find it on the screen that you're looking at or on our website. Uh, make sure that you click that link and fill that out by the end of worship so that we can uh, hear your prayer concerns, get any feedback from you, uh, and also you, that's a good way for you to leave your offering if you're prepared to make one today, and we thank you for your generosity in this time. It means a lot. Uh, also, now's a great time to share this on Facebook or uh, start a watch party so that your friends can worship with you. But again, welcome one and all. And I add my welcome as well. I am Jen Willard, one of the lay leaders. It is lovely to be back here uh, in the physical presence. And although you all cannot be here with us, it is if you are. So I can see all of the pictures of many of you in your regular spot in the pews. Uh, we welcome all of those who have not been physically with us before. Good morning. So we begin our worship this morning with our breakthrough prayer. This is a prayer that we are using every single day at noontime. We hope that you're beginning to memorize it. Uh, and today, this prayer will be written on the screen. We invite you to follow along, but we have one of our children from Grace who will lead us this morning. Oh God, as the ringing of our church bell breaks through the air with the sound of your grace. So break through to Grace United Methodist Church with your ideas, hopes, and plans for our future. We are listening. Amen. This in our summer hymn sing. These are hymns that you all have selected. Onward Christian Shoulders is our first. <laughs> Christian soldiers marching as to war with the cross of Jesus. 
Next, we'll have the reading and the hearing of our scripture lesson this morning. It's a great time to pick up that Bible if you have one with you. And we'll also be putting the words up on the screen. Our reading this morning comes from a selection from the book of Hebrews, chapters 12 and 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight in the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary or lose heart. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God, that is, the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The word of God for God's people this day. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, move among us. Move into our hearts and our minds. Show us the way. May this word help us understand how you are making all things new. In Christ we pray. Amen. So at the very start of an Olympic marathon, runners will pace themselves, running in such a way so as to conserve their energy. But as the miles pass, sooner or later, one or two of the runners are going to break free from that pace, moving ahead. The last few miles are what matters the most, it requiring all of their focus, relying on their years of training. Olympic athletes train for their event every day. They study their course, they work out different muscle groups, they maintain a proper diet, repeating their training day over and over again each day, attending to every little detail. Well, being a Christian means that we too are in training every day, but we don't know the path ahead of us. We don't know what the course is going to look like. We don't get to do the same thing day after day over and over again. We don't know all the details ahead of time. Being an Olympian in our faith means that we build our muscles of trust, hearts of flexibility, and instead of running ahead with the strongest, we pace ourselves with those who need our help. Our only focus is Jesus Christ. And remember what the prophet Isaiah described? He said, he had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. Dorothy Day, a woman who learned about Jesus as she was in her early 20s or so, she learned about Jesus through a young nun she encountered in New York in around 1917. She was baptized shortly after. Dorothy Day was the inspiration and co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement in New York City during the Depression. She was relentless in her care for the poor, those with addiction, those with mental health issues, prostitutes on the street. She didn't turn anyone away. She was a pacifist and often accused of being a communist because of her social work. She provided lodging for the homeless and fed over 3,000 people every week, overseeing this work for 50 years. Imagine that. 
She said, I really only love God as much as I love the person who I love least. I really only love God as much as the person who I love least. Her single-minded devotion to Christ included a political activism, insisting that serving Christ came by living in solidarity with the poor and in the struggle for peace and justice. During her later years, she continued to make, take part in pacifist protests during World War II and during the war in Vietnam. She believed that both peace and justice go together, that you can't have one with the, without the other. If you have peace, you have justice. If you have justice, you have peace. Now this text that we began with in Hebrews this morning begins with this word, therefore. Therefore is like a flashing red light. It means we're supposed to pay attention. What I find challenging in this part of Hebrews is the instruction, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely to run with perseverance the race set before us. Really, God? Really? Now? We did not sign up for these Olympics. We didn't sign up for having faith required to live out a worldwide pandemic, to let go not only of every sin, but also to let go of our lives as we knew them. Help us, Jesus. We are looking to you, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. You are the one we want to follow. Read these lines again now. It says, He disregarded the shame of the cross. He endured hostility so that we would not grow weary or lose heart. Jesus experienced every human challenge and still kept delivering goodness into everyone and everything. I keep thinking about the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus went to pray fully understanding his purpose for which God sent him into the world. Now, Jesus was with his disciples, and he, he said to them, just please, please, stay here with me. Keep watch with me. In Luke's gospel, it describes that as Jesus prayed, the sweat were like drops of blood that were hitting the ground. Can you feel the anguish? Can you feel the grief and the distress and the agony? And remember that it was here that his soul friends, his spiritual friends, his disciples, it was here they fell asleep. So come on, church. Let us not grow weary, not fall asleep, but rather keep our focus on Jesus Christ, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, the one who set the pace, the one who gives us patient endurance, the one who increases our trust, the one who moves into our hearts, the one who reminds us that there are things yet to come that we cannot see. There's always new life emerging. So here's the thing, my friends. We may not see it yet. We may be weary of this social distancing, of this mask, mask requiring, of this hand-washing culture, sanitizing everything. We, we may be tired because that is increasing in our lives. But God, God is about doing a new thing, and new things are happening everywhere. 
It may not look like what we wanted it to look like. Jesus might just be tying a, a belt around our waist and taking us where we do not want to go. But it's Jesus, my friends. It's God with us. We can do this. We are given perseverance and strength each day that we keep our hearts and minds close to the greatest love that we can ever know, a love that gave itself for us. That just makes me want to get up and praise God. Just, just give a God the glory and the, the praises even amidst the challenges of this time. Well, here's the practical side of the matter. And this is for you, especially for our church families with students and specially abled persons in their family. Those who, of us whose love requires maybe a hospitalization. Those of us who might need some kind of daily assistance. This marathon is hard. And as school starts and work and school and family life all happen from home, as hospitalizations are required when communication gets shut, cut short between uh, family members who are loving and, and worried about one another, as help is needed to get through each and every day with some of the simplest of tasks, well, we have spiritual tools in our toolbox to help us. You've learned during this Olympic sermon series the, lex, the practice of Lexio Divina, of allowing the Word to move into your life in deeper and meaningful ways. We've talked about spiritual friendship and, and growing soul friends. Today, I offer you the daily examine, and it comes from St. Ignatius, an ancient church father whose spiritual exercises are part of the answer to our need. So this morning here in worship and on our website, you will see this daily examine. I invite you to begin this practice with your families, your partners. You can do this on the telephone with your soul friends. You don't have to be in person to offer this practice. And it begins with becoming aware of God's presence. Now, God is always present, but it's up to us to acknowledge, to, to open ourselves to God's loving presence. We're doing that every day through our breakthrough prayer. That's a really important prayer for, for trusting in God's love, that God has ideas and hopes and plans for our future. And so we, we begin this practice of daily examine by becoming aware of God's presence. The second step is to review the day with gratitude. So oftentimes it's helpful to do this practice in the evening. One of the best ways that we can grow in our faith is to rem remember both the moments of joy in our day but also the moments of frustration. And we really need to learn how to give thanks for both. Ignatius would say that our prayer will offer us consolation at times. At times there's great joy and overwhelming love. But there are other times when the frustration makes it so that we feel so far away from God and we're confused. Well, both of these experiences are important to the life of faith. They all belong, our joys and our frustrations. Jesus invites us to remember, to care for others with nothing less than his love. And we learn that as we deal with our own sense of God's love and joy and our own sense of frustration. The third thing that you do in the daily examine is to pay attention to your emotions. Pay attention to how you're feeling 
and do not judge your emotions. Let them to be the, the signs of wisdom for your discernment. Be objective about them. One of the best ways to be objective about your emotions is to think about one of your close family members or friends having that same emotion, someone that you care about, and give yourself the same grace that you would give them. Be kind and gentle to yourself as you listen to your emotions. They are all acceptable, and they will all be helpful in the growing of your faith. The fourth step in the examine is to choose one feature of the day and pray from it. So in a sense, this is about listening deeply to yourself about what matters. And over time, you might want to re recognize the pattern of these features. They might reveal a lot about your own call and your gifts for discipleship. And the last part of this examine is to look toward tomorrow. Now, again, our memory is important. Our traditions, our past, they are all important. But faith is about looking ahead to what we cannot yet see, patiently enduring what is emerging. Remember, it is through Christ that God is making all things new. And sometimes we need to put old things down in order for the new to come. So I invite you to please um, use that daily examination examine and you can practice that again it is on our website for your use um, throughout this week so following in the footsteps of dorothy day we can respond to god with obedience giving the same love that jesus gave us to others it's august and our school supply drive is on. There are different items and different ways to give this year. And you'll find out those details at the end of our worship and as well as on our website today. But I'd also like to know the names of every person who might offer 30 minutes a week to help tutor one of our own students, one of our own families that might need a little extra help with their students at home this year. I'd like to know the names of every person that would like to help assist someone who has a daily need that they can't accomplish themselves. I'd like to know the names of every person that can check in on someone who's in the hospital, ready and willing to offer a presence, of a friendly phone call. We are the living body of Christ, living and breathing and persevering on this journey. And we are focused and aimed at a love that makes all things new. As we move into our living thanks this morning, you are invited to come before God acknowledges presence you might want to practice the daily examine that we just used or you might just want to sit in his presence and soak in the love that you need to give you the strength and the energy to move into this day and into this week remembering if we keep our eyes on Jesus Christ then new life will continue to emerge and Goodness is all around us. There is an abundance for us. But we need to take time to notice it and to receive it. So you may use this time to do just that. If you are able, we invite you to um, make a donation also during this time. That can be found on the Connect With Us button. And you, you can make your donation and offer your giving in this time of worship. We are glad that you are, um, that we are the body of Christ together. 
uh, we look forward to all that is ahead in the name of Jesus Christ. Worship continues now at the time of prayer, which I will lead. And as I do, I'll, I'll name a petition and I'll say out, out loud, Lord, in your mercy, and you're invited wherever you are to reply, hear our prayer. Uh, there will be a time for you to also name aloud where you are or type in the comments uh, folks that you want to remember in prayer or other situations. I want to make sure that uh, you know we are praying for folks who have been mentioned uh, on our prayer request. Our our online prayer requests through the connect cards or uh, through the week using our website. 
And so today we join in prayer for Chris and Dan and Christine and Patricia and Liz and many others. We also heard that, uh, about this earthquake that has just happened this morning south of us. Uh, and so far, there's not many reports of damage or injuries, but we do pray for those who are impacted by that. And we want to mention a joy that one of our own, Raymond Sinisi, has, uh, has actually earned his citizenship as an American citizen. He uh, came and was a recipient of some goodwill through some Grace members uh, when he first got to the country through our ESL class. Uh, and they have loved and um, supported him as he has worked really hard to get to the place where he was ready to take his citizenship exam. And so we celebrate God's goodness and his hard work uh, and the story of, of grace and, uh, and help and success. Uh, we give thanks to God for that. So with that, let us uh, gather up all these names, this cloud of witnesses, and go to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, we, your people, gathered across the miles, turn to you in faith and pray for the church and for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord, we pray for the church. Grant that all who confess your name in the church may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray for your church throughout the world, for your United Methodist Church, for our Bishop Sharma Lewis, for our District Superintendent Jeff Mickle, for the Ministry of Grace United Methodist Church in this community, for the pastors, the leaders, the church council, and all those activated here by your spirit as the church in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and the leaders of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace. Help us as a society to honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours, those we encounter daily, in person or virtually, essential workers throughout the world, especially those in our immediate community. Bless those whose lives are linked with ours because we are neighbors, especially the neighbors of this congregation. Grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as Christ loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. And hear our prayers for those that we carry on our hearts, along with those that we've named out loud. To all of these, O oh Lord, give courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who teaches us to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our worship continues with our final song. We invite you to sing with us. It's really good to be back, uh, and I wish you all could be in the room. Uh, I hope it happens over the airways, but every time we are here worshiping, the, the Holy Spirit shows up. Thank you to everybody who made worship possible today, uh, and we're really glad that you could join us. We hope it was a blessing for you. It doesn't stop here. We want to make sure that you know about ways to remain engaged with grace during the week. Uh, we want to ask you to pray for the church council. We're having a meeting this afternoon, and so that's leaders of the church kind of talking about some big picture things, so um, keep us in your prayers. And then we want to make sure that you know that this week there's lots of opportunities to be engaged with grace. One of them is, uh, as, as is typical, morning prayer is being offered on Monday and Wednesday morning. Uh, and if you can't join us on that at that time, be sure to go to the website or the Facebook page or YouTube page to catch others. 
The other is that our music ministry is offering us this gift of Tuneful Tuesdays this season. Uh, so every Tuesday evening, there's some really fine music being offered from our music ministry and folks that are friends of grace. So uh, there's a new one this Tuesday that's going to be Bill Schillinger and Kana Wade offering their gifts uh, to God through Tuneful Tuesdays. So make sure you catch that. The Grief Group is meeting this week, this Thursday, and if you need information about that, make sure to subscribe to our weekly email. Uh, and that's also where you'll find a link to our Wednesday Bible study and the book club. Uh, we have an online book club. Our last meeting is this Wednesday for this book. Uh, and then stand by to, see, to hear what book we start looking at next. But our last book club is this Wednesday evening. Uh, we hope that in one of these ways you'll be able to remain engaged with us this week. And it is August, and Pastor Janet mentioned it is back to school time. Even if we're not physically gathering our students and teachers, they are creating hundreds of small classrooms and study spaces and homes all around. And our students need our help. So we continue our school supply drive uh, through August 22nd. There, you can find the list of items that we're looking for both in a list on our website and on the Amazon wish list. So let me give you just some examples of things on the Amazon wish list. Things like 50 earbuds for $32, supplies in bulk at reasonable prices, markers, pencils, pens, erasers, all the fun things that us nerdy people loved to get every August for school. Uh, you can ship them directly when you order from Amazon. We also have the list on our website. You can find those things, the usual stuff, stickers, notebooks, and there's a drop-off point uh, at Georgetown South. There's also a $25 desk from Ikea for our children who do not have desks. Uh, so you can check that out. Uh, Debbie Kelly is helping to coordinate this drive with Meg Carroll. You can get in touch with her if you have questions about that. But we always appreciate the generosity that comes forth um, from our Grace Congregation and friends. And we hope you are able to do that again as we support our students at the beginning of this school year. And so go forth into this week receiving this blessing. Remember that you are created in the image of God, and so go forth in the love of Christ and in the strength of the Holy Spirit to love and to serve others. Amen.